Good. All right. Here we go. Let's see if I can find the correct presentation. Right. Can you all see Destination London? Can you give me a thumbs up or something if you can. Yep, we could see it. Excellent. Good work. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right. So this is where perhaps you're going to be spending London or where your son and daughter are going to be spending um, the summer. So this is London. And if I can get this to work. Here I am. This is me. I'm the centre director at London at the moment. And this I see as I walk to work each morning. This is Trafalgar Square and you're looking directly past the fountain at the National Gallery. To the right is St Martin's. And if you see that little gap between the buildings on the right hand corner, that's leading up into theatre land, which is where some of you will be wanting to go with the National Portrait Gallery on the left. And then you go up to Shaftesbury Avenue and it's thoroughly beautiful. So this is London. So then what do you need to know about London? London is known to be one of the most multicultural cities in Europe. We have a population of nearly 9 million and you've probably seen most of them out in the evenings on a sunny afternoon um, because we all get very excited when the sun shines in London. You will hear over 300 languages spoken in the streets. There are, if London is one of the most green cities in the world, there's 3000 parks to enjoy. And as some students of mine recently discovered, right near Buckingham Palace, there's a flock of pelicans who live on the lake by the palace. They were given to the king, King Charles II, by a Russian ambassador in about 1668, I believe. And there's been pelicans living in the park near Buckingham Palace ever since. So London, as the theatre um, theatre lovers amongst you will probably know, is a major centre for theatre and it's a great rival of Broadway and often there's an argument about who produces the best work. So we have the great West End theatres showing musicals, we have small fringe venues some of which are over the tops of pubs and they launch the great successes that you'll find travelling from the fringes to the National Theatre or the Royal Court Theatre and off across the world. There's lots to choose from. Uh, when you come to London, theatre just being one thing that you might enjoy, but there's lots of music, there's films, there's art, there's fashion, everything you can imagine. As far as history goes, well, as you probably know, London is has got many, many layers. In fact, there's one part of London where you can go down in a lift and find Roman London um, quite a long way below where the uh, Cannon Street station is. So as you walk around the city, you'll see Roman walls on medieval streets, you'll see skyscrapers, and they all coexist. So you'll see all of London laid out in front of you, if you know where to look. So then there are two programmes of study in London. They're both thematically linked to literature and culture. The first one you might be interested in is Theatre Arts Behind the Scenes. This has been running for several years now, ever since high school came to London, and it's been very, very popular. Um, as you, you may not know this, actually, but there are over a thousand theatres in the UK. I teach uh, theatre to students at CIE, and so I often use this statistic. And a quarter of those theatres are in London. You can, you can barely walk a metre or two before you find another. So this course gives you the chance in three weeks to watch and analyse a number of plays, and the most important ones that we think are on at the time when you arrive in June and July. And you'll be learning about um, how to develop strategies that will help you write your own work. You're going to get a backstage view of writing and the picture you can see here is the backstage of the Globe Theatre looking out over the stage and into the auditorium. You'll get a view of writing, devising, rehearsing and staging plays and if I appoint the lecturers I'm thinking of, those both have um, worked in the theatre and last year was staging a play in a park as they were also teaching students. So they gave students an insight into that process. You'll also be writing your own plays in a group or even on your own if you want to perform at the end of the course and you get assessed on that play. 
if you prefer to do something else, we've just launched a new course um, in response to requests from students. And we've called it, I think it's a bit of a cheat really, we've called it Creative Writing in Literary London. But the idea behind this was always to work on the Harry Potter novels. And then our legal team got scared about using the title Harry Potter in the title of the course in case we were infringing trademarks. But anyway, the idea is we'll be looking at the Harry Potter novels and we'll be looking at the cultural industry that's grown up around those novels. So the films, the plays, the um, websites, the games, all sorts of fan fiction. And we're going to be discovering the impact of writing the novels on J.K. Rowling, their author, who, as you know, was recently viciously trolled for expressing her opinions. And we'll be talking about that. We're going to be seeing some of the locations mentioned in the novel, and we're going to try and allow those places to inspire your own creative work. So the classes will be working on the novels or a theme suggested by the novels in the morning and then doing creative work and going on explorations in the afternoon. And I've shown you a picture here of JK Rowling's beautifully messy notes for planning out Harry Potter so you can be inspired to write. So then, what will you love about studying theatre in London? What's not to love, really? It's, as I said, a very famous centre of theatre. You're going to be working with small groups of students who love the theatre just as much as you do. You're going to be following a course of classes that combines study with excursions and visits. And you're going to be learning from practitioners and guest speakers who are working in London theatre now. So they'll be working with you teaching what works for them, and then as importantly, taking your questions so you can ask them everything you've wanted to know about theatre so far. Some of these excursions then, we'll be taking you on a backstage tour of the Globe Theatre and perhaps the National as well, if I get my own way. We'll be taking you up to Stratford so you can see Shakespeare's birthplace and the almost saint-like role he now plays in British culture. I'm then going to cheer you up by letting you eat fish and chips by the river in Greenwich. We're going to visit Hampton Court Palace, which is home to Henry VIII, and you really get a sense of him living there. It was also where Macbeth was first performed. And you're going to spend some free time browsing the London markets. And I've shown you a picture of Covent Garden and the Punch and Judy venue, which is where public performances take place in the market. I'm going to keep on going. We can take questions at the end. I hope that's all right. I've then asked you why well, you'll love studying creative writing in London. Again, small groups of like-minded students, and we've built classes around themes of the Harry Potter novels. So when I say that, I mean, we might, for instance, be talking about why schools are so important in children's literature. We'll be talking about difference and identity. We'll be talking about bullying and how it's dealt with in the novels, and then how that spills over into the online bullying that we see associated with some key writers. We're going to give you the chance to develop your own creative writing and we're going to build on lessons um, so that you come away understanding the role of the writer, the significance of schools in literature, the significance of pupils who are identifying themselves and learning their role within a community within those novels. And we're going to take you on a number of excursions that show how the novels relate to London and the UK. So you'll see some of the film sites, for instance, that feature in the in the films of, of the novels. And big question that parents and students have is about housing. So here is a slide that I've inherited from the previous centre director and it's very very general it talks about how you'll get the opportunity to learn to live as a group which is quite hard actually at times you will have programme leaders to help they'll be on site with you and taking care of you and they'll also help you manage any difficulties that might happen these will almost certainly will happen but we'll help you manage them so you'll be staying in shared rooms at your accommodation, all your meals will be included. So you'll get breakfast at your accommodation and explore the wonders of the full English breakfast. You'll take your other meals at the CIE Centre or at local restaurants. And in the evenings, we'll have various activities. Maybe we'll take you to see plays, we'll take you to other activities. One of the hotels that we've got our eye on is very close to a bowling alley. We might take you there and you can even do some karaoke there if you feel you must. So in the um, 
because I think it's good to be really clear with you, I've given you two examples of hotels that we used last summer, the summer just gone for our summer abroad students. The first is called Tavistock Hotel and it's two minutes walk from where we are in CIE in London, in Russell Square. Excitingly, it's the site of Virginia Woolf's home in Tavistock Square, which um, sadly got bombed, but has been rebuilt in this style. The rooms are decorated in an Art Deco style, and you might be in a twin or a triple, or even at a push in a quadruple, but we'll be trying not to put you in a quadruple, I think. Each room has got free Wi-Fi, which I know is vitally important, TV, hairdryer, and as I said, you can explore a full English breakfast if you want to each morning or a continental breakfast before you come to classes in the morning. The other option we use is the Royal National Hotel, which is a bigger hotel than the Tavistock. It's a little bit further away, but it's renowned for being very well organized. So in addition to be able, being able to have breakfast there, you can also get pizzas and coffees there. You can try out the London Pub restaurant, which apparently has got quite good fish and chips. We do actually serve things other than fish and chips, but I keep mentioning it. Um, and again, each room has got free Wi-Fi, TV, you can make tea and coffee in your rooms, and breakfast is included. So then, I need to say a word about weather, because if you were watching the news over the summer, you probably realised that it was very changeable. So here on the left, you can see the, the aspirational come to London sit in a glorious green park, look at the blue sky, that's the dream. The reality can be more like the middle picture where it's raining and you have to wear your coat. But then this year for the first time in as long as I can remember, and I'm quite old, we had a drought and we had a heat wave. It got up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit in July last year. And I wanted to emphasize London hotel rooms don't tend to have air conditioning. This is a real problem for our students. It was actually a real problem for everyone in Britain because we were all sweltering hot. We will do our best to take care of you in that situation, but that's quite exceptional weather. I just want to make you aware that it did happen this year. So then I need to talk about COVID. I don't know what it's like where you are now, but in London, we're now very relaxed. I've just got back from a CIE conference in Seoul where they emphatically are not relaxed and everyone's still wearing masks. But in London, hardly anybody is unless they're coughing and they're being very community spirited. So few are now wearing face masks inside on public transport or outside. There is now no legal requirement to isolate if you test positive for COVID and students do test positive for COVID even now when they're coming over. Possibly it's a different strain of COVID that's going around in the UK. For the good of the community, we will of course be asking you not to come into class if you test positive, but we won't necessarily be making a private room available to you unless you request it. Um, we can talk more about that later. Students who have recently tested positive who are in shared accommodation as you would be are being left alone in the room in the apartment they're in and everyone else is moving out and then they have a bathroom rated to deal with bathrooms and kitchens but we can talk about that in more detail. I want to make it clear that we've got hand sanitizers obviously available throughout CIE London most of the population over 12 is triple vaccinated. I'm just about to have my fourth vaccination next week. Um, and of course, we stay in touch with you if the situation changes and there's anything you need to know. So then we are at questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing and come back. And hopefully you can ask me any questions you would like to ask. Hi, we have a question. Okay. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about how the flights would work? Um, is there, you know, um, a way to fly with a group over to the UK? Do you fly into Heathrow? Is there someone to greet the students there? How do they get to their residence from there? That sort of thing. All very sensible questions. Yes, once we have um, 
flight itineraries, because obviously you're given a date of arrival and you would plan to arrive the day before the first class of orientation. And we can just talk about um, what session you'd be doing. I think one date is on the 8th of June. Sorry, I'm just going off my memory, which is a little bit difficult at 8.30 at night. And then three weeks later, there's the next date as well. So you'd be, all be aiming to arrive to Heathrow, please, um, on your arrivals day. And more information will come about that. Yes, of course, we meet you. We will send a coach to come and get the students. You will have your program leaders there and you'll have a representative from CIE. Usually it's somebody wearing a CIE shirt, I'm told, because I don't tend to do this, holding up a big banner. Um, if you arrive earlier than others, we get you settled in a cafe. We wait for everybody else to arrive and then we go on from there. So we will be sharing the itineraries of arrival time. So you have your, your son or daughter will have an idea of what time everybody else will be getting there. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> so Rosie has asked, are session dates available on the website? Absolutely are. If you go to CIEE.org, HSSA London, you'll see the program dates, the session one and session two. And these, both of the courses I've talked about are available in each session. Would there be any, I'm sorry. Yes, Would there be any um, trips uh, planned outside of London? Yes, absolutely. So uh, which course are you interested in, Rosie? Well, not my daughter, not me, but. <laughs> Um, for the writing, creative writing. For the creative writing. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, we do have a, some trips actually. Um, in one of the films, there is a trip which features an abbey with cloisters that's down in Laycock near Bath. So we're thinking of taking the students down to Bath, which really should be in everybody's life anyway, because it's beautiful. It's where Jane Austen used to walk the streets. There's Ro Roman Bath, it's glorious. And then a couple of miles out of Bath is a place called Laycock, which is, if you've ever seen the BBC Pride and Prejudice it's the film set for that and the Abbey there Laycock Abbey is where part of the Harry Potter franchise was filmed so we'll be taking you there we've also got other ideas that I'm trying to push through but I'm it's getting a bit expensive so I want to take the students to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child if I can make the budget work in London so that would be over two separate occasions I also want to take them to Kew Gardens which is um, beautiful botanic gardens and we'll be looking at herbology and potions and the the uh, the Whomping Willow there there's also an idea about forest bathing for those who are feeling a bit frazzled halfway through the course thank you my pleasure was someone else asking a question too um i had another question okay um, i'm here with my daughter sure. um, for uh the residences um is there I don't, I don't know how to ask this. Uh, what's the security like? That's the best way I could put it. Okay, so do you have a specific question? Obviously, well, first things first, there's somebody um, at the entrance to the hotel okay. and you will be asked, you will collect your room key. So they'll be checking who comes into the hotel. The okay. program leaders will be staying with the students. Um, the rooms will have, so the rooms, it will obviously have a lock on them. Um, I can find out if there are safes in the room, but the hotel will store passports and things as necessary. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Um, what about curfews? Ah, right. Ten, we tend to exhaust the students during the day, but I, I really do mean we exhaust them by the day. Um, so there'll be an eight o'clock breakfast, nine o'clock, they'll be in class for about three hours. They'll have lunch. They'll go out for an activity in the afternoon. They'll come back and they'll have dinner. Sometimes they'll go out to see a play in the evening, which goes on till 10 o'clock at night, and then they'll go to bed and they'll mostly be absolutely exhausted. 
we keep the longer trips for the weekends and again they'll be exhausted by the time they get back okay so does that mean that okay say if they get back when they get back um I'm just putting this out there hypothetically. And if, uh, say, one of them wants to go back out after they get back, is that allowed or no? Or who's keeping No, it's not really. The program leaders will be making sure that everybody's where they should be at around okay. 10 o'clock at night, 10, 10, 30 at night. Okay, great. So Thank from you. my experience of last year, people weren't sneaking out after we thought they were in their rooms. Okay. Is that specific enough? Because I know I'd be worrying yeah. about that because I've got an 18 year old. <laughs> so, yeah. I have to ask the question. <laughs> no, I completely understand. Thank you. That's a pleasure. So I have another question. So once the session ends, do they have to autom uh, immediately leave the hotel or they, um, I mean, how, what's, is it, do we have like the next day they have to? depart yeah i understand what you're saying the the dates will be fixed according to the program so on the final day of the program they will have their final class and then we'll expect the students to leave the following morning okay thank you and usually you have to check out around about 10 to 11 o'clock this year some students were booked onto a flight at seven o'clock from Heathrow and the coach went and collected them at four o'clock in the morning to take them out to Heathrow okay thank you it's a pleasure I'm just going to check the chat in case Mia's asked any no, Mia, have you got any questions that you want to put in the chat? No, no questions. Are there any more, Sophia? Yes. Um, what, do, what do the weekend activities look like for the writing class? So one of the weekend activities will be, as I explained, where you're going down to Laycock. So the trip down to Bath takes about two and a half hours. We probably would put you in a coach because we'll be going down to Bath and then cutting across and going to Laycock before coming back again. And then on the following day, we will give the students some free time to explore on their own with their program leaders. Um, but we will always have activities on both days of the weekends. Um, I haven't yet planned the second weekend away trip. <laughs> okay. It might be a trip up to Oxford. I wonder whether you'd like to come to my old college. I was at Christchurch in Oxford and the dining hall was the, um, the dining hall for Hogwarts. So we could see if I could sneak the students in to see that. Oh, wow, that would be great. <laughs> I can't guarantee it, but right. you know, I mean, it would be That's quite nice Thank you. Pleasure. Are there any more questions? So me has just asked, is the group housing based on age, interests, or is it random? So Mia, the big one is gender. So gender does become important and we would be talking to you about the gender you identify as being as well. Um, that's quite key. Um, age, most of you are actually around about the same age. Um, last year, it was around about 16, 17. We had one person who was 18, um, but everybody else was 16, 17. Um, yes, the um, program assistants and the program coordinator will be looking at the interests that you disclose on a housing questionnaire, and we will be doing our best to match you with people we think you would get on with. We certainly wouldn't want to match you with anyone that you seem unlikely to get on with. So when you fill out these housing questionnaires, be really honest about yourself and about things that might drive you slightly mad because the more information we have the more likely we are to get it right
Let me know if that answers your question. I know, I know you're not allowed to speak. You could do a thumbs up or something if you're happy. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Mia. Very nice. Anybody else? No, I'm going to put my email address in the chat. If you have any other questions, please, of course, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can. There'll be more information coming as we release the syllabi and as we get further along the process. But yes, if there's anything that you wish you'd asked, please just get in touch. Okay. Thank you. It's such a pleasure. I hope to see you or your children in the summertime. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. Bye all.